another episode of I'm Down. Gang, Hi, gang, friend. gang. How you doing? Uh, <laughs> George Gutty, you already know your favorite bad guy of all time. Chris Gutty. The Chris B- Gutty. Chris. I just said Chris Gutty. Oh, shit. Cut, cut. <laughs> George Gutty, <laughs> your favorite bad guy. Christoph the Third. <laughs> your favorite good guy. Your favorite good guy. I uh, mix that up. I mix that up, y'all. We're back again with uh, yet another episode, man. Oh, we're going strong, bro. Ah, yeah, man. So this is gonna be um, I like, I want Chris to talk about this because this is this is basically the title of this one is gonna become becoming better men. I think I'm the worst <laughs> person to ever talk about this topic. Period. I think I'm the worst man who ever lived. <laughs> oh, okay. I am. You're setting the standard pretty high up there. I'm probably one of the worst men who ever lived. Ever. 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 Who, who's worse than me? Name, name one guy. I can name five. Who? No, I'm name Hitler. Me. Hitler don't count. That's not a mess. Stalin. Who? Mao Zedong. But like... How, Judas. How, why? Because he betrayed Jesus? Yeah. But he betrayed Jesus for some coin. So he sold out on his own friend. That's the worst thing you could do to a boy. That's a bitch ass nigga right there. <laughs> Judas. Bitch ass nigga. Um... Well, maybe not about I'm top 10. Top 10. Let's go top 10. If, if you have a top 10 list of the worst men you need, I'm probably on that. So, let me ask you, as one of the greatest men <laughs> of our generation. Damn. Oh, look. If you guys watch relationships, you guys understand that Chris is like... Somebody told me Chris is the poster boyfriend. Poster boyfriend. Like, there's... Yo... Like Chris got girlfriends now, man. <laughs> girlfriends, like yes, like he is. That's why. That's the only reason why I started with the the good guy. If I'm down, this guy is a good guy right here. So you know, what do you? Okay, first thing I have to ask is why. Like let's let, let's go with why. Well, actually, no. Before you even ask, answer why. What is becoming a better man in general to you? What do you think becoming a better man is? Uh, <clears throat> I think it's learning to be responsible. To be accountable and to be dependable. I like that. Accountable and dependable. Because, you know, and, and yeah. the reason I say those broad terms is because you got to decide in your field, mm-hmm. who, like, who you got to be accountable to, who you got to be dependable to, and, like, you know, what kind of responsibility. Because as men, you know, as young adults or youth or whatever stage of your life you're in, you know, one of the things we, we struggle with is responsibility, right? Like, you might say, oh, I was showing up to work or whatever. But we don't own up to the responsibility or the, the opportunities that we have in our lives, right? You know, I will tell you and you will tell me. It's like one of the biggest things we can do is leave a legacy, right? Like that's my dream. That's my desire. And I think that, that we all in a way, shape or form, we want to leave a legacy, mm-hmm. right? And as men, being better men is leaving something that will be long lasting long after you're gone. I think that has to be the idea of being better men. Because, um, you know, we're all broken. We're all screwed up. I guarantee you as every person they're going to tell you that they're the worst person they know. Like I always say I'm the worst person I know. Right? And so, you know, because we we all, no one knows us like we know us. So no one knows the dark thoughts, the dark emotions, the dark habits, mm-hmm. the things that we are not, like, you know, comfortable enough opening up to other people, right? Because even the most open person still has secrets, still has thoughts, yeah. right? That, that they, they're like careful to share because they know somebody saw or heard or thought the way they thought would be like no no this is the worst person there is mm-hmm. you know so I, I think the whole idea of being better men is setting a standard for ourselves was what we want to be and what we want to leave for others I think that's I like the that. idea okay I like that that was that was really really well said actually okay so I guess my so to answer the, the question why why should why should guys in general just seek to be better for for who for them for women for their families like why why, why should we try like why should we not just stay how we are because we're comfortable why should we try to be better for for who are we trying to be better for why what's the whole point of trying to be better I, I think the, the whole point of trying to be better it, it encompasses different areas of your life like for example you as a, as a person you, you have an innate desire for more right uh, you know your, your life it's how, never, how it's never, nothing nothing ever is satisfied. Nothing there is ever enough, right? Yeah, yeah. So imagine if you channeled that desire for more into becoming more. 
mm-hmm. into being more, into knowing more. Because I think better man is not yeah. just, you know, improving the way you speak, but it's improving your knowledge. And, you know, take a time to read a book. When's the last time somebody read a book? You know, and maybe the book was not the best. I would say just take the time to read a book. There's something so special about when you just take a time for yourself, mm-hmm. right? Like, as, as, you know, this world becomes so social media focused and so, like, you know, open to the world and blah, blah, blah. We actually have no time for ourselves to just reflect, yeah. you know. And so many times we don't even know what we do, half of the things we do, why we said what we said, how we feel, right? And so I, I think like that, that idea of becoming better is making the standards that drive your lifestyle. So, for example, you know, you you maybe want to be a father one day. Before be that dad you wish you had, right? Yeah. You want to be a you saw maybe I don't know you saw abuse in your household. Then be the husband you wish your father would have been. You know, be the brother you wish you would have had. You know, I, I love a saying that says, be the person you needed when you were younger. You know, and I think that's the whole idea. I always say that because I think that at least that should be the innate desire in all of us. Is somebody, we could we needed something. Mm-hmm. Why can't we be that something for somebody? And I think that's being more, you know, because maybe somebody needs a teacher. So learn so you can teach. Somebody needs a doctor, so study so you can, you know, heal. So, you know, somebody needs a police officer, so serve and protect. You know, somebody needs military, somebody needs this, somebody needs that. Somebody needs a dad to just be present. You know, because we always think that being, you know, more or being better, many times it's just being present. Right, right, right. And, and, and you know, that, that, that's actually very true. I like that you said that too. Um, it, it doesn't, you know, a lot of people... I feel struggle like with some of the things you said, like being a better brother, being a better father than you had, all of those things, being present. You know, it's um. I think we we're having this conversation before actually about how, even though in your mind you might may say I'm gonna be different, I'm gonna be better, it's it's very hard for you to put that to action because you just don't know how Ooh. to. You know what I mean? So it's it's almost like for, I guess like for you, right? Like you know, you tell me like. The reason I say you're one of the best guys I know is because of some of the things that you do, you have reasons to why you do them. You get me? Which a lot of people don't. And the reason you give these reasons to some of the things that you do is for you to become better, for you to become mm-hmm. more. So in what you have obtained, what kind of advice could you give then to a guy that is that doesn't know how to? What kind of guidance could they really get out of I don't know how to be like this. I may be, in my mind, I may be thinking about mm-hmm. it. Like, I would like to, but how do I become this thing that I never had um, a male figure or some mm-hmm. kind of figure to yeah, teach sure. me how? Or like, you know, to, to show me the way for me to see mm-hmm. how. I think that's what a lot of people struggle with. They don't have the, like, the... The example. Exactly. Like, you know, if, the, if their example was somebody who's always absent, someone who's abusive, they don't want to be like that, but... That's the only thing that they were taught. You know what I mean? Like, you can't really learn something that you don't know, haven't thought about. Mm-hmm. How do you change that? I, I think there has to be an honest desire for change. Because, you know, we all think about change. You were saying, you know, we have the thought. But we don't, like, I guess we're not fully aware of how much it's going to cost us to change. Mm-hmm. So there has to be an honest desire where you say, like, you know what, regardless of the cost, I aspire to be better. So I'm going to work hard. And I think the best example for life in every aspect of your life is the gym. You don't go to the gym and start benching two plates. Mm-hmm. Maybe you go to the gym and start it with one push-up. But you persevere, two push-ups. And now you're doing the bar. And now you're doing tens on your side. And now you're doing 25 on your side. And now you're like, you know what? Double plate, three plates, four plates. The biggest dude was not born super strong. Mm-hmm. He had a dream, he had a passion, he had a desire, he persevered. If your desire is to be better, then you become intentional. Like, you know, people who say, oh, you know, I want to get fit. You know, a small part of being fit is the gym. The biggest part is your diet habits, is if you're sleeping properly, is if you're taking the time to rest, right? So you got to be intentional in making the research. Like, for example, you, you know, you always tell me, oh, you know, I'm, t- I'm learning about this new different way of exercising and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So I hate going to the gym with you. Yeah. Because I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm ready for the traditional, you bench, you squat, yeah. Yeah. I end up doing like one hand push-up stands, like, I'm not trying to be a gymnast. But yeah. you're into it because you want to find the best way. So you're finding all these areas. The same way it has to be with us is, what is working? What isn't working? We got to be intentional about what we want. You know, if you want to be a better brother, one of the easiest ways to be a better brother is find out what your brother likes. 
Have a conversation. You know, you want to be a better husband, a better boyfriend, a better whatever? Start shutting up and start listening. You know, that's one thing I struggle with. I like to talk a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I struggle with the idea of listening. And so we have to understand that if I want to be better, then I'm, I'm good at speaking. So what I got to learn to is not learn to listen. We got to be self-aware to know our weaknesses. It takes small steps. Because sometimes we want to change our whole, like, you know, you always tell me, yo, I want to stop cussing. But if you cussed your whole life, you're not just going to stop from one day to the other. Mm -hmm. You start making changes. You know what? Let me replace a word. Mm -hmm. Or let me, you know, not speak as much. Or let yeah. me, and so little by little, you, you start finding yourself not cussing anymore because you just, little by little, small steps took you out. You know, the small victories are still victories. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just want to be the best dad. Yeah. I just want to be a dad. <laughs> you know, like... I, I, I like that you said that. Especially bringing in the gym and the small victories. I think that that's a very important thing with change. It's 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 about the micro changes, mm -hmm. you know. Like when you go to the gym and your goal is to lose weight, and you know you losing a pound a week, using half a pound a week, you know these little tiny things, you know, what I'm saying they make, you know, they add up to bigger yeah. changes within the long term. You know, mm -hmm. so, so I like that you said that. I think that that is a very important thing, guys. Um, when, at least for me, right? Becoming better men is something that. That for some reason I almost default to how we treat others. You get me? And I think that one thing we forget and one thing that we, you know, it's like treat others the way you want to be treated, mm -hmm. right? And when we do that and somebody doesn't treat you a certain kind of mm -hmm. way, you result in treating them like shit too. Yeah. You get me? And, I, and I, don't, I don't know, but for me that thought right there is like if you give somebody something, and they don't give anything in return to you, you should still love that person. You still got love for that person. I, I think that is the biggest side of love. Mm -hmm. you, know, it's, you know, the biggest side of love is giving to somebody who cannot give you anything back. Right. Because if I can give you money, it's because I, and I only do it because I know that what I need, you got me, mm -hmm. then I'm not really giving. Yeah. I'm, I'm lending. Yeah, except pretty much, literally. You know? So yeah. it's like... But if you give to somebody who cannot give you something back, that is a big sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Because real love is sacrificial, yeah. right? It's doing for others what they can't do for you. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that that's one of the biggest, like you said, is also a hard thing to do. You know, I think that that becoming better men, depending on the kind of man you are. I think it, this, this is not very like general thing. Is is detailed to the kind of person yep. you are. Because mm -hmm. right now you may be a great father and a great husband, but you lack in certain areas mm -hmm. of your life. You get know I me? Mean? And I think that that's when we kind of need to like really be able to look into ourselves, right? And really be like, this is what I gotta yeah. fix. You know what I mean? And I think that you know, um, for us that's one of the hardest things: self awareness. Yep. I think that it's you can't teach that. It, it, it's it's and the reason I say is that you can't teach it is hard. For you to, because honestly, I feel like sometimes we do things that we aren't aware that they're wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like first they're not wrong, so you're not thinking it's about them. Forever. Forever. Right. So it's I think self awareness, how you cause people. You know what I mean how you how you know what, what you cause in people. And sometimes you can walk in a room and have this energy with you that everybody's just attracted to. You. That you can't explain. Yeah, you just can't explain. And sometimes you have this energy that's just negative that people don't really want to like you know, talk to you and really deal with you like that. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it really is something that, that comes from self-awareness to understand, like, what are the things that you do that are good? What are the things that you do that are bad? Mm -hmm. How can you fix this? And I think that what you said is exceptional. Like, it's it's um, it's um to try to be reliable, be responsible. All of that comes from self-awareness. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? To honestly say, like, okay, this is what I'm, this is what I'm doing wrong. This is what I got to fix. Now I'm going to try to go ahead and fix it. Mm -hmm. And I think that that goes to show that in life, you will never, ever stop working. There is no such thing as a vacation period because if you're not working a job because you have enough money to just lay back and chill, um, you don't have no kids, whatever, like you still have work within you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that bringing the gym into it is absolutely perfect. Because you could be someone who's in shape right now, is a fit, you know, 8% body fat, you're lean, whatever. But you still have things in your body that you know yourself, you have to detail out, you know what I mean, and make better because you can see it, right? But to other people, it's like, dude, you yeah. look great, you yeah. know what I mean? But to you know your flaws. Only you do. And you're aware of that. So, because it's physical, it's just easy. And I think that that's the work right there in itself is 
because a lot of things are internal, aren't physical. We can't see it. We need to really dig deep. You get me? I, I, I saw this thing yesterday where this guy said, we need to have more conversations with ourselves. Right? I was just thinking the same thing. And I couldn't agree more, honestly. I, at first, when he first said it, I was like, like, are you serious? Because I do that with me all the time. Honestly, I have conversations with myself all the time. And I think that that's very important because when you start to talk, period, your inner self almost like it's starting to reveal things like mm -hmm. of why you're feeling like this or why you're thinking like that. And when we don't do that, we just have it bottled up, then we never really vent it out. You know what I mean? Really just, then you don't get to learn about yourself. You at don't all. get to the bottom of the issue. Oh, exactly. Like, you know, sometimes you may be feeling depressed for no reason. You know what I mean? You may be feeling sad for no reason. Those are the times where you probably need to ask yourself like, is it, could it be this or could it be that? Well, if it is, but am I being a little bitch about it? Am I, am I really like, you know what I'm saying? Like, is this really that big yeah. of a deal? And those are the kind of conversations you need to have with yourself. Yeah. You don't always need to vent to somebody, but just have them with yourself. And you know, that, cause that's when I usually start to like really unravel a lot of the things that I like to talk about in general. When I'm just in the shower, I'm in my bed and I start just, I'm just, my mind's going. I start thinking about things like, hmm. Well, maybe, you know, we do this because of X, Y, and Z, and you know what I mean? And I think that that's very important, that we start having those... Yeah. And, and I, I think, you know, you were saying that the self-awareness is something that can be taught. Mm -hmm. but, but I think that there's points that you can take toward, you know, having self-awareness or deploying self-awareness. One of those is, is having moments of just quiet, solitude, just being with yourself. Right, right. Most of us are not comfortable just being with ourselves. Right, True. and we need those moments where it's just us, so that we can reflect, we can realize, and we can feel. Because mm -hmm. especially as guys, you know, since this is about becoming better men, we don't learn to properly feel and be in sync with how we feel. So if we don't know how we feel, we definitely are not gonna know why we feel how we feel. Mm -hmm. Right, so we can't get to the bottom if we don't start scaling. You know, kind of like the whole. I remember Shrek. It's like an onion. Oh, and you gotta keep peeling layers. layers, right? So many times in our life, that's how we are. We just gotta keep peeling layers. And sometimes somebody cannot do it for you, right? It just needs to be you willing to take that time to just be intentional about, you know, let me check my myself. Let me check my mindset. Let me check my, my heart, how I'm feeling. Let me check my, my, my actions. What did I do this week? You know, that I was, am I proud of what I accomplished? Am I, am I feeling discouraged? Am I feeling yeah. disappointed? Am I feeling depressed? Am I feeling anxious? You know, and you start checking yourself. And then once you figure out what you're feeling, you start saying, why? Mm -hmm. Is it because they said that to me? Or is it because I associate what they said with something somebody told me before? Or is it because yeah. something somebody did to me? Or because I feel like I'm not secure enough, I'm not strong enough, I'm not mm -hmm. able enough. Yeah. And as we start realizing this, then we can start focusing on our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Because we can't address what we don't reveal to ourselves. For sure, I like that. That's very true. Like what you're saying is facts. It's, um, it, it's something that... That it, it takes, I think that when you hear, maybe listening to it and hearing it, you might be like, talk to myself, that's kind of like weird, but it's, you probably do it all the time in your head. Yeah. You know I mean? Whether you do it in your head or you have a journal, you know, the idea is still the same, you're yeah. conversating. Yeah, I like that, man. I think that, you know, it, it, it's very true, like for us, you know, it, it's something that, that for men, like you said, to be in tune with our emotions, our feelings is hard. I mean, look. Again, like, one thing I love talking about, and I always say, is just talking about relationships because you kind of get to understand a person's mindset, whether they're in it for the the reasons of, oh, I'm just in it because it's a norm, or they're in it because they've taken the time to really think about it. I feel like when you take your time to really think about something, then you have a lot more to explore within your mind when you're a person that's mm -hmm. really taking the time to think about it. And and, and with that, it's, it's that women tend to bring out you know, women are these nurturers, right? And, you know, like, a guy can act as tough as he can with his boys, right? Like, man, I'll, I'll mess with that girl, rah, 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 you know what I'm saying? Whatever. You know, you put on this tough, but, you know, when you're with your girl and you're just alone, they bring out, you know, the biggest gangster and thug the will tenderness. be, you know, super tender, super soft because the girl will bring that out. I think that that's, you know, like a, a benefit of a woman, like, that what she has that a man can't give to us. Period. You know what I mean? Like a man can't get to another man is that. You know what I mean? Like that's because that's not, that just doesn't go hand in hand, right? It's like a woman brings out this side of a man that allows him to realize some of these things. And those are some of the things I've realized having our conversations from like all these, 
you know, like getting the, oh, why are you always bashing girls? And, you know, it's, it's not that I'm bashing girls. It's just that I have an opinion on a certain topic. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that I think girls are, like, trash. Like that. I understand that girls have qualities that really highlight in the man. You get me? Whether that girl will be your mom, that girl will be your sister, that girl will be your girlfriend, that girl could be your friend. You get me? They bring out something that another man can't necessarily bring right, out. Yeah, you get me? So, sure. so those, those things, you know, for a man to be in tune with his emotions is something that's very important. You get me? That we need to start to really dissect more, especially mm -hmm. this day and age. You get me? Like, especially with the openness. Remember, the world's changing every day, you know. Therapy is like a thing now. Like therapy is like a real thing now. Like there's yeah, but it, I think you know this crazy thing is that we needed, we needed hype, right? Mm -hmm. To finally realize that finding help is a good thing. Yeah, for sure. We needed like you know some of the biggest stars to to commit to commit suicide, right? To realize that you you know you want to be a better man. I'm gonna tell you the first thing about becoming a better man. You cannot do it alone. Mm -hmm. Like that. You need other people, sure. whether it's your friends, whether it's your family, whether it's a, a, a leader, a leader, a mentor, somebody you're finding that can help you and check you and hold you accountable and hold you responsible. Like, no, no, this is what you said you wanted to be. So where are you at? Mm -hmm. You said you wanted to be able to bench. So why aren't you here in the gym? Mm -hmm. Well, you said you wanted to have a healthy diet. Why are you eating that? You said you wanted to be more respectful to women. So why are you talking about that girl like that? So why are you, you know, and so... Because we wait until society tells us that it's okay to need help, we've delayed our own growth. Mm -hmm. But if you want to be better, you need people who are better than you are. Yeah, for sure. That that's that's key right there. To be surrounded by people that are better than you. Be surrounded by people that you feel that are gonna bring out the best in you. That are gonna call out the shit that you do. Especially those are the people that you definitely be surrounded by. Not the people who are. You know, bringing you down. Not the people that are talking shit all the time. You know, you definitely need to be around a certain group of people that are, you know, in a positive mindset. You know, thinking about the future. Thinking about growth. You get me? That's how you grow. I think that's very important that you said. I'm glad that you said that. Because that's something that we forget too. Like, you know, the, you might be the most positive person ever. But because you're around the most negative people ever, your energy yep. is just down. They're sucking all your positivity away. You get me? And, and, you know, that's something that we definitely need to be able to look at and change, you know. And I think that once you start becoming a person of growth, a person of change, you start to kind of cause that change in your friends. And the people that don't change, you end up unyoking from them anyway. Yeah. It just happens naturally. You, you grow out of each other. Yeah, you grow out of each other, you know, because you're not in the same level. You, know? you want to be negative, I want to be positive. So those things matter, you know, that, that having that positivity... And at the end of the day, I think growth always is always gonna start with just mindset. You know what I mean? Like, like, like anything, you need to be willing. Like, you it said, has to be intentional. It has to be intentional. You have to be, like, you know, willing to say, you know, I want to change. Like, I, I otherwise, like, people can tell you, you, oh, you need to go to the gym. You can go to the gym. You can do this. You can do that. People can give, but like, you got somebody to come in and cook your meals for you and and all of that. But until you don't make the decision within you yeah. that you're going to be faithful to go and cause this change or you're going to go and go to the gym until you don't do those things, the change won't happen. You yeah. know? So all those things apply to just us in general. Yeah, yeah. it's like, you know, like in rehab, the first thing, you know, the first step is that many have a problem. Yeah. Second step is finding help. Mm -hmm. Right? For sure. You know, and, and we, we just make it this about addictions, but a lot of our, a lot of our ways of thinking are as dangerous as an addiction. Because they're toxic, you know? And so then we wonder why we can't have healthy relationships. And then we wonder why we can't have, like, normal interactions. And, and why we can't, we're not encouraging or we're not positive and we always feel down. And it's because the way our thoughts have been arranged in us, it just leads us down, you know? So whether we notice or not, eventually we end up messing up relationships. And we end up messing up conversations. And we end up messing up our own lives. Mm -hmm. Because we were never, you know, we were never willing to be self-aware with ourselves and say, hey... This, this, and this is what you want to be, but this is where you are. Okay, now pace the road, you know. We're just talking about finance. The same is that you set up goals in your life, right? You want to be a good dad, all right? Prepare yourself from now, you know. You don't have to wait to have a kid to learn how to be a good father, you know. Find somebody you can leave, somebody you can be an example to. You don't have to wait to be married to be faithful to somebody. Mm -hmm. Commit yourself to something and start being faithful to that. Yeah. You don't have to be, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, anything. You don't have to be a friend. You don't have to have a friend to be a friend. Start being a friend to whoever needs it. Yeah. 
And, and then you'll be the friend people look to. Mm-hmm. You know, all these things are things that we got to be intentional about. Like, they just can't happen, but we just wanting it. Yeah, I, I like that you said that because that's so true. Like, I was just telling my little sister that. I was like, look, you know, you always complain about how this is boring, that's boring. Well, maybe you got to look at yourself and say maybe you're boring. You know what I mean? And if you want things to be fun, you know, it's up to you. Because in reality, you can take someone on a cruise, which is like party land, period, and they'll have a bad time. Because it's, it's up to the person. I got sick. I didn't like the food. I didn't yeah. like this. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's all about that mindset. Like, if you're a fun person, like, I've always heard this all the time. Everybody loves Cardi B's energy. Yeah. Like, I always hear that. Like, oh, her energy's off the... Like, whenever she comes She's up, hyped. it's, like, hyped up. And, and it doesn't matter where you're at. You know, you make it fun. So, I think that's very important. Yeah. You know, you need to be the change that you want to see. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That, that's basically what it There's a to. proverb that says, as a man thinks, hmm? he is. Mm, I like that. So, if you're wondering why you are where you are, start by saying, what am I thinking? Mm-hmm. You know? And yeah. that will probably reveal why you are where you are, or why you do what you do, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I think that's, that, I think that we nailed it down to like that. Yeah. I think the idea is of, how do we become better men? We start checking our thoughts, and our ideas, and our views. Mm-hmm. And then from there, we take the, the first small step. And every victory, celebrate, and keep looking back yeah. in perspective. And you may not be where you want to be, but you're not where you used to be. And For sure. Because uh, Jerry always says, oh, you're a good man. I always tell him he's a good man. But then we ask each other and we say, no, I'm the worst. I know. He tells he's the worst. No. You know, but it's because we have a standard that we believe we should be. Yeah. But at the same time, we also got to celebrate that we're not where we used to be. You know, and I think sure. that, that's part of growth as well. Mm-hmm. For sure. I think that, you know, if you've been watching this uh, channel for a while now, you do know, though, that Chris is definitely better than me at this point. At least as a man. <laughs> He's uh, you see, he's definitely uh, the good, the good guy. You know what Hi I mean? Hi guys. So, uh, <laughs> Welcome to our show. It's a pleasure yeah. having you. We appreciate your takes. So keep liking, keep subscribing, keep commenting, because we want to hear your views. Maybe we we need to learn how to be better from you. Mm-hmm. So thank you. Have a great day, and God bless America. And we want to know, Kiki, do you love me? I love you very much, Kiki. <laughs> <laughs>